So now in this video, we're going to talk about and even measure the short circuit protection of the LM358. It's a dual op amp that I've been using recently. This is probably most of the type of op amps I have. I have uh, other op amps and other kits. There's a lot of op amps out there. And so before you assume anything about any particular op amp, make sure you check its data sheet. So I was looking at this data sheet. And one thing I don't remember anybody ever mentioning when I studied op amps is that there is short circuit protection for almost all of them. So I was looking through a data sheet and you come across a uh, point along there where it mentions the short circuit protection and a lot of times it says continuous or unlimited I think are the two main ones. I think I found at least one that does not have short circuit protection but in any case the LM358 the data sheet I looked at said that it is continuous protection to ground so I don't know that it, it is to the positive rail. I did measure the short circuit current to the positive rail and uh, luckily it was okay so as I said I already measured it I'm gonna set the meter to uh, milliamps so we can measure a lot of milliamps with this uh, meter and I don't know that it goes up to 999 though even though it says milliamps you would think it would go as to one amp I tried to measure I think 900 milliamp once and it beeped at me that it was out of limit uh, they don't sell this meter anymore I don't think anyways but if you have a meter make sure you look at the uh, the booklet that comes with it if it doesn't have an exact number and how much current you can measure so this thing will fry I've short circuited it before and uh, uh, it's only rated for like 500 700 milliamps of current I think 500 is the recommended maximum 700 is probably when it's gonna fry or something but in any case probably more chance we would damage the meter or the uh, power supply than the meter I don't even think it can output uh, one amp but in any case the LED is off right now let's actually measure the voltage so we're gonna set the meter to measure voltage auto ranging and so we have the circuit I made in the last video which is an emitter follower a common collector there we have the trim pot set to zero volts if we go to the output which is directly connected to the inverting input you can see we have zero volts let's turn it up just a little bit less than what the LED conducts take a look at the voltage you can see 0.47 and the output uh, 0.47 the exact same the output and the inverting input right there so we get the same voltage out of the uh, trim pot as we set to the inverting or the non-inverting input because the inverting input is connected directly to ground so the the uh, op amp is going to do what it needs to to keep the voltage to the non-inverting input as much as it can so there is limits though let's see if we already hit that limit and we'll take a uh, voltage of the trim pot so yeah it's pretty close and you can see the meter is affecting it uh, let's go let's go up a little bit more there you go 3.9 there and then 3.3 uh, has been the maximum voltage I can get. So it's a little uh, lower than what the rail is. We have 5 volts there. 3.3 is the max we can get to. But we'll go down a little bit and we'll see that. Oops, want to go there. There we go. 3.23. So we're still above 3.3. Let's go down a little bit more check that one first there we go three three point zero and then two there you can see it's the exact voltage so it plateaus it cuts off I don't know the technical term at uh, three point three volts so we have it turned all the way up the op amp is outputting as much as it can so we're gonna short circuit it to uh, look at that so we're gonna set this to milliamps of current and right now the output is high so we're going to short circuit it to ground. Now, you don't ever want to short circuit anything through the meter unless you're absolutely sure 
that current is limited and I'm absolutely sure otherwise you uh, risk probably blowing the fuse but maybe damaging the meter so you're gonna see the LED go out because there's virtually no resistance through the meter and uh, so whatever current the output of the op amp lets out in fact anytime you uh, short circuit around a semiconductor it's not going to conduct uh, a direct path through a wire or a, a meter acting as a wire anything with zero resistance basically uh, all the currents just gonna go around the semiconductor that's why it turned off there but there you can see we have a limit of looks like about 50 milliamps of current when I was browsing through the data sheet it looked like it can be anywhere between 40 milliamps and 60 milliamps and that falls in line with that there so now we're going to do the uh, opposite we're gonna set the trim pot down to uh, nothing and you can notice I get spikes the the uh, trim pot there is pushing its way out and so I gotta push it back in and uh, so sometimes you'll see spikes from uh, misconnections and stuff but uh, once it's sitting still it uh, it does pretty well so we will look at that just real quick we have should be spot on zero volts maybe there's a tiny resistance or something that will build up a little voltage we have zero volts out of the output there that's why the LED is off we're coming to the negative rail so let's go back to a milliamps and I know the beeping's really annoying so I'll try to uh, make this the last time I changed the setting there so we are going to now it's the negative side right here or zero volt we're gonna go to the positive rail and there you can see the op amp it is it is sinking current so you think of current going positive to negative so some of its going through the op amp and but not all that it can produce and so there's also current available to go through the LED this is the total current right there so because that goes to negative we're going positive here so it can go to negative there and negative through the op amp now the data sheet says ground for the short circuit protection it doesn't say anything about the VCC so I may be risking doing damage to this right now and uh, but uh, that's uh, I'm okay with that so let's go here we just took the load away the circuits exactly the same in there you can see yeah it's about uh, 29 milliamps of current going through the op amp again I don't know if it's causing any problems or potentially causing any problems but a uh, lot less current from uh, the positive rail going through it which makes sense because this doesn't go all the way up to the positive rail voltage but it does go down to the negative rail voltage or our ground in this case so in any case the main takeaway is that a lot of these op amps uh, practically all of them I, I don't think all of them I think I did find some that do not have short circuit protection at the output it's the output we're talking about if everything else is wired but a uh, piece of wire or something goes directly from the output to ground and then uh, most op amps also to the positive rail I think the op amp will uh, limit the current and so it's safe to do so I don't know that it's the best for everything but usually the uh, the uh, data sheet says continuous or unlimited protection from short circuit so I'm assuming that means it's probably not going to damage anything uh, for an unlimited period of time probably the life of the component that's my guess I don't know but uh, in any case I don't see this covered much so I try to make a video about it on uh, every op amp I use I try to read the data sheet about what its short circuit protection is and uh, test it out take a look for it and normally I don't use uh, this power supply unless I'm absolutely sure that there will not be high current I'll use my bench power supply which I can limit the current to to uh, 500 milliamps 100 milliamps whatever I want it's not uh, exact you turn a dial and you get an estimate but you can limit the current to like 100 milliamps or something and then uh, no matter what I might fry an LED or something or other component but that's fine uh, they're mostly all cheap and stuff but uh, changing the fuse of a multimeter stinks 
And uh, these, even these, they're like a dollar each or something. I, I have like 12 of them now because I've fried a few of them. They do fry pretty easy. It's easy to short circuit these. We have these two uh, wires there. You know, I could sometimes make a connection there. There's also the uh, two connection points on the trim pot there. I could accidentally touch them. You'll see the LED go out on here if you're able to see that. And that's usually when I know I have a short circuit because the power's on. I see that green LED go out and uh, I move my hand quick. It comes back on usually. Sometimes it doesn't. And another thing about these frying. So, kind of sorry I'm rambling on, but uh, this is a good point. When these fry, I think every time they were outputting almost the voltage I have coming in. So I have 9 volts coming in at the uh, barrel plug there. And so, I think when they short circuit, they don't, like, die. And uh, I may have one that just died or something, but I'm pretty sure at least two of them, they output the voltage, approximately anyways, that I had coming in and uh, so if you like measure the voltage at the rail and it's higher than 5 volts or 3.3 volts because there's a jumper you can move it that's a pretty good sign that you fried it and just uh, get rid of it get a new one I don't think there's any any way to uh, fix it unless you really like working on uh, fixing modules like this so in any case Hopefully you still enjoyed the video. It went longer than I expected, but uh, that's okay. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.